This studio on the southeast side of Bloomington, Indiana, is the artistic outlet for artist David J. Emerson Young. He has been an artist most of his life, but just recently found a purpose in his painting. It really hit me when uh, one of my best friends uh, in Seattle took me to a place where the glaciers were melting. The vast majority of the earth is warming. Uh, over the last uh, 150 years, in particular over the last 30 years when the warming has been much more intense. But in fact, uh, climate change is a more accurate concept. Uh, global weirding is also perhaps appropriate. Dr. Brabson will facilitate one of a series of lectures that discusses David's art. Mark and Crystal Gopin will also present material during four additional lectures. All are designed to augment the global warming messages in David's paintings. And so what we're looking to do is combine uh, his brilliant visions of artistic explanations of global warming together with what we might reason through with people as we talk with them so that the art will be there and it will help fixate and focus the discussion on imagined problems of the future, but also imagined alternative reality. I want people to understand it's really art that is science-based and we have to grapple with it. It's not, we don't have much time. There is this wonderful painting that, that I've seen of David's, which is the story of a frog, about how it is that we, as, as frogs, in, in a wonderful pond of water, where we're very happy in doing all the things we love to do, find that our pond is indeed increasing in temperature. As the pond warms, we are very comfortable in our warming pond, but what we don't recognize is that that temperature as it rises eventually gets to actually rather nice boiling water and that it begins to cook ourselves. And the question is, when do we jump out of the pond? David is really talented in pointing towards what is destructive about climate change, but also in how he uses colors and images we as a human species, I think we need hope because if we talk in climate change as a whole, it's too big. So what we need is hope, but we also need to break it down into manageable pieces. Put my mind into a helicopter mode. <laughs> and so all the trees are circles, like they would look straight over them. I carved out of that a road, and then I had little yellow tractors cutting down trees in a place where most people wouldn't see them. And there are so many ways in which a picture says so much to us about what is actually going on in our world. Using this new strategy of bringing illustrations into the conversation is, in my view, important. David's art is by nature beautiful and appealing. It appeals to a, a certain comfort and, and calm inside the human spirit. And yet you're dealing with a very difficult topic. We need people to reason together. This is all about a pro-social experience of people talking, not screaming at each other, but talking and thinking and feeling things together. The, the danger of the global warming discussion is that it's so, it's so catastrophic that it's making people panic. But on the other hand, everyone drives a car. Everyone's become dependent upon gasoline. There's none of us that aren't partly responsible. We all have both been victims of what this is gonna become, but we also have been perpetrators. So we already know that, that this is a shared responsibility, but it can become conflict when people try to pass it off on someone else. We do have opportunities here that are better than a war zone, but the level of panic I'm seeing is something we're all gonna have to face. We're gonna have to face the negative emotions and then turn them into a compassionate response. I mean, the problem is huge. The problem needs to be solved from many points of view. Every effort then is essential. Political, scientific, emotional, aesthetic, all these must play a role. Without all the tools in the toolbox, then we may fail. And we are at the moment failing, unfortunately, in our efforts to communicate. This is the first one I did. It is very, very close to the blues beautiful blues in the face of the ice that has no air in it at all. It's pure color. You know, you see these beautiful blues and, and turquoises. That is a beautiful thing to see, 
and it's a disaster in the happening. The deepest one for me is the glacier, is the blue one, because we're a blue planet. And in all the universe, we can't find the blue planet yet. Water and oxygen are a miracle of the universe, and I want to see it preserved. When I feel the longing between the sky and the oceans for blue, I think about uniqueness and, and how special and precarious it is and how much we are the stewards of that. I think people who don't believe, people who will like the aesthetics of them, even though it's, uh, it's weirdly contradictory, I'm talking about really bad things happening, but making paintings that still are artistic. That's kind of the way to bring people in, I think, who are skeptical.